Welcome back, Canonites. It's an exciting time to be a Halo fan. Halo 5 is just a week away and Hunt the Truth continues to impress. Well, let's not waste any time and dive right into the new episode. We open with Maya telling us that the ship mistress held up her end of the bargain and Maya, Bostwick, Mashak, and Bibi were set free, ship and all. On a side note, how much do you want to bet we're not quite done with Ms. Chorzal? Anyway, Bibi announces that he studied the data gathered by Ari and created a model to predict future events. Using that, Mishak is able to find a nearby colony, like a 3, that's going to be hit soon. Bibi further reveals that he forwarded the information to Oni. Mishak wants Bibi shot, while Maya goes ballistic, asking why when Oni would ultimately do nothing. Bibi counters that Oni can at least contain the situation, and argues that there is nothing else that can be done at this point. Maya, being human, won't hear it. She sets in course for like a 3. Upon arriving, we are greeted by a world of green and blue, a vision of Earth without the huge human populations that spread across its surface. It's serene, in a word. After a few words from Bibi asking, well, what the hell they expect to do, Mishak sets to work trying to find signs of the anomalies. Before he gets too far, however, the ship is shot. A message appears on the control panel, from Ilsa Zane. She had tracked them all the way from Conrad's point, and she wanted revenge. After another few hits, Mashak tries to contact Ilsa, hoping to save his own ass in his own comical fashion. But before he can finish, Maya takes over and tries to warn Ilsa of the coming event. Ilsa reveals that she is aware, hoping to take control of whatever power is capable of crippling a colony and using it against the UNSC. Now, I know our characters are unaware that these are Guardians waking up, but I would genuinely love to see Ilsa try to take control of a Guardian. It'd be comical, if nothing else. With her ship severely damaged and the engines out, Maya takes the ship into a dead dive their last hope for survival. Bibi tries to get Maya to hand controls over to him since he's an AI and won't pass out from the G-Force, and after a little bit of protest and, again, with little other choice, Maya complies. Maya passes out soon after, but she does wake up, alive. As she's coming to, she's surprised to see none other than the founder of the Triad, the holy man himself, Das Gevadim. Das reveals that her comrades had all survived and goes on to tell that Maya's arrival, or rather, Pharaoh's, was not coincidence that her arrival was divine will. With that, he takes Maya for evaluation, aka Thetan readings. As she walks out into the camp, Maya finds dozens of people, shaved eyebrows like Dosk, pitching tents, engaging in strange activities, and all full of religious fervor. In short, it's a cult camp. Dosk suddenly begins talking about the Covenant, how they followed a hierarchy of three prophets and were blessed by an oracle, and how in some ways, their beliefs were right. Of course, Das goes on to point out how they were wrong, how they misinterpreted the ancient texts, and how he discovered the genuine truth. You know, classic religion. Interestingly, Das brings up this idea of the Order of Three, and how it relates to transcendence. In Halo Broken Circle, we're told of an ancient prophet, the prophet of inner conviction, and how he believed that society would always fight against chaos, and when three vectors of chaos appeared, that society would crumble. It's actually a common theme in Halo as a whole. Referring to a blog post by the brilliant Horispus, in the time of the Covenant, the three vectors were humanity, the Flood, and then the Civil War, ultimately ending the Covenant as it was known then. In the time of the Forerunners, the three vectors were humanity, the inner civil political conflicts, and finally, the Flood. It's funny how Dosk's idea of the Order of Three seems like a reflection of the idea of the three vectors of chaos. If there's a direct relationship there, it remains to be seen, but I found it interesting. And of course, as always, I could be reading way too much into things. Anyway, Maya is brought into a tent for evaluation. A strange contraption is put onto her hands and head, of course on the promise that she wouldn't come to any physical harm. Like I said, future Scientology. Once done, Dosk asks Maya what she knows of him, and she's pretty straightforward. He offers the promise of transcendence, a promise she sees as little more than snake oil, and accuses him of preying on the desperate. Maya goes on to say that the anomaly is going to appear and kill Dosk's people, and then threatens to tear the camp apart if she doesn't get to see her friends. Mishak is immediately ushered in. When Maya again inquires about Bostwick, Mishak quite loudly states that she's out in the fields helping new arrivals, and points out to Maya that Dosk is reassuring his followers. He clearly didn't want them wondering about Bostwick, which just makes us and Maya wonder even more. Dosk is suddenly in Maya's face again, talking about how she's lived two very disconnected lives, about the pain she must feel, and how she needs to connect them and embrace her third self. Funny how he puts that, as if he knows the truth about Maya and Pharaoh. And maybe he does. Even more interesting, though, is just how well Maya's situation really fits with the idea of the triad. She has led, literally, two different lives. Her life is Maya, her life is Pharaoh. Now, she is neither Maya the Oni agent, nor Pharaoh the insurrectionist leader. 
she has to embrace this third self that's emerging. Anyway, Maya asks Dosk how he knew of the anomalies, and he just claims the universe told him, in his usual hyper-religious way. Dosk then heads out of the hut, and Maya hopes to take the opportunity to escape. Unfortunately, the only exit is guarded. Before Maya can come up with anything else, Dosk ushers her and Mashak out into the field where the triad members are engaging in strange rituals. That's when Maya notices the floating rocks. Now, doesn't that sound familiar? Dosk then starts preaching and is suddenly floating several feet above the ground. Some of his followers start floating too. Dosk then turns to Maya and proclaims, The end has begun. I know I keep saying this, but damn what an episode. More anomalies, Dosk's apparent divine knowledge, and him really knowing how to take advantage of a situation. The guy can play to a crowd like no other. I, I love and hate this man. <laughs> and more so, I can't wait to see how this ends. As far as we know, we have one episode left. I'm so excited to see what happens, but more so, to talk about how the events in that episode, and the series as a whole, relate to Halo 5. So, be forewarned, the next episode discussion is definitely going to be spoiler heavy. But until then, this has been Halo Canon, and I pray that you are ready for the inevitable end and the glorious transcendence that awaits those who believe. Keep shining, brothers. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.